Ascended Master's lore is an interesting subject. It revolves around information that's metaphysical to the extreme. And traditions like Theosophy and other esoteric organizations also talk about these mysterious people who have attained what New Agers call Ascension. Their ranks are said to have sages from all denominations, as well as philosophers or any of the enlightened greats from history. Buddha is said to be an ascended master, as well as Lao Tzu, Confucius, Jesus, Anubis, Krishna, Shiva, Saint John the Baptist, among many more names prominent from religions and wisdom traditions throughout human history. There are also different names for these beings throughout many traditions, such as the Secret Chiefs of the Golden Dawn. They are also known as the Great White Brotherhood, white as in light, not race FYI. They're known as the Masters of the Ancient Wisdom, the Esoteric Order, Elder Brothers, Mahatmas, Tibetan Masters, and more. So to call them the Ascendant Masters is not the only title attributed to them. These higher beings are all said to have transcended beyond the human condition, their souls free of the limitations inflicted by material matter. However, not all who achieve ascension become ascended masters. It's a choice an individual completely makes on their own, because they are actually free to move on to a higher realm according to the lore, or a higher state of existence, or higher dimensions, the heavens, etc. But instead, they stay behind and watch over and help guide humanity. Though their influence is limited to not conflict with people's individual karma and the karma of the human race as a whole. So the ascended masters tend to only interact with a very select type of person. The masters make contact with those who are spiritually awakened and those who can transcend mundane existence. If they influence the world too objectively, it would essentially make our lives pointless on a karmic level. And like many topics concerning New Age stuff, or esotericism in general, there's a lot of contradicting information concerning the same subject, with many groups of people forming their own unique conclusions. Primarily, the concept revolves around karma, the law of cause and effect, which is also known as Newton's third law in physics. The idea of karma is ancient and well known across the world, especially the Eastern cultures. However, unlike how the West views karma in mainstream society, which is wrong, karma in the East only affects somebody after they die. The actions of past lives play a huge role in a person's challenges, sorrow, and fate in one lifetime to another. People build up karmic debt, and this debt must be repaid in the next lifetime. The majority of souls are stuck in a never-ending karmic cycle of death and rebirth, making extremely little to no progress from incarnation to incarnation, with their prospects of breaking the karmic cycle more and more elusive. However, Ascended Masters have broken this cycle, because they've reincarnated hundreds to thousands to even possibly millions of times over, and are the definition of old souls. But not all Ascended Masters were old souls before their awakening. Some are born destined for this role by the influence of ineffable entities beyond human comprehension. They have not only transcended the karmic cycle, but also have become one with their higher self, merging into a single entity. What some people call the Great Work, or the Magnum Opus. And the destiny of all souls to eventually reach within the many planes of existence in the multiverse, not just life here on Earth. They have free reign to traverse dimensions beyond ordinary human comprehension, yet have chosen to stay behind and help guide the paths of others. The Ascended Masters take on earthly missions and has often contributed to guide particular humans to achieve the greatness that benefits humanity as a whole in the long game. They are pretty much the guardians of humankind and the great teachers throughout the ages that mentor sages and geniuses alike. Does this sound kind of culty to you? Or kind of cool? 
Well, anyways, there's also aliens. I don't know if you've heard of the Starseed community, but they took the idea of Ascended Masters and turned it up to 11. Indigo children are also said to be sent by the Ascended Masters, but let's talk more about aliens. This also has multiple perspectives that I could look at it from, but from this perspective, humans are a fallen race. We're in a galactic quarantine with the sides of light and darkness in a war for our fate, not only without, but also within. We have a massive karmic debt that caused us to fall from grace on a cosmic scale, forcing humanity to start over from nothing after a cataclysm destroyed our once great interstellar civilization. And if that sounds weird and crazy, then good. Because there's also evil lizard people. The Xenos aliens called the Reptilians were doing some pretty messed up stuff, and a lot of humans helped them out or something that doomed the rest of us. We were hanging out with cat people and other awesome alien friends that are part of the same cosmic family of Lyran descendants. But it all went to shit. With humans knocked back to a primitive existence, which was a huge downgrade. Our vibration got damaged so bad that we could only exist in a third dimension. At least, consciously. But Ascended Masters have worked beyond the karmic debt before the fall and are free to interact with our galactic family members. They are working to help enlighten humanity and help us all vibrate higher to release us from our galactic quarantine. If you wonder why aliens haven't interacted with Earth, even though, according to science, there should literally be aliens everywhere out there, check out the Fermi Paradox. But this is what explains the Fermi Paradox. And it's the Ascended Masters who are working on getting us out. And moving away from Starseed lore. Another tradition of Ascended Masters from other perspectives on the matter are the Yogi of India. In the Yoga Sutra, written by Patanjali, there are a number of fantastic supernatural powers associated with the Ascended Masters and Yogi alike. When the yogi advance to a certain point, they may become ascended masters or just vanish out of existence altogether. Many of them incarnate on earth out of thin air as fully grown human beings during troubling times in history, when their teaching is required for the benefit of the entire world. Instead of transcending to the next existence, they stay behind to steer other humans on the path to ascension out of selflessness. Again, they are broken from the wheel of karma and the limitations of the material plane, which allows them to assist humanity in a very esoteric and mysterious fashion. The famous and divine Babaji is one such example of an ascended master who materializes into a human form at certain points in history to teach and guide. In the book, Audiobiography of a Yogi, written by the Ascended Master Paramahansa Yogananda. There are many examples of what these supernatural beings are capable of from a yogic point of view. If you're into meditation and Indian philosophy, Hinduism, karma and the like, you should really check out the book. However, not all Ascended Master lore is from the East or from the Near East or Starseed lore. There's actually a lot in the West as well. A famous Ascended Master of Europe was the Count of Saint Germain. He was an adventurer and had an intense love of all things intellectual and creative, as well as occult studies like alchemy. The Count is a profound scientist and artist, and anyone who heard him speak philosophy had their f***ing minds blown. The philosopher Voltaire called him a man who knows everything and never dies. And there are many stories of people who met him when they were very, very young, and then ran into him when they were very, very old, only to be amazed that Saint Germain had not aged in the slightest. The legend goes that he discovered the famous Philosopher's Stone and, in doing so, attained eternal life 
and could control his body to the point the aging process ceased and he could also cure illness within him at will. Throughout European history, St. Germain popped up and vanished, only to pop up again later. And this went on for hundreds and hundreds of years, even to the present day, and has had a huge influence on the history of Western civilization. The Count St. Germain has been the true identity of many historical figures in the West. In any case, the Ascended Masters guide and help direct humanity to a greater future for all from the shadows. <laughs>